Hi friends and welcome to another stream. Uh, I am doing some Rust programming and I'm working on a PR the, for a project called GitUI, which is a terminal UI uh, or terminal client written for Git in Rust. Um, so currently I have a pull request already made, uh, which I am working on now to make some improvements to. Um, after some discussion with um, with uh, Extraburst, uh, the maintainer of this project, um, I, I kind of made a first uh, draft of how to solve uh, a specific problem, which is multi-line commit messages. And my intention, is, and I've, I've gotten some feedback on that and how we probably should do it. Um, and now I'm going to make some of those fixes. So I can start by running the project here. Oh. Apparently I can't type. Mm. Okay, this is interesting. Why? Whoa. Some key is stuck <laughs> on the keyboard. Let me, oh, it closed the whole thing. Okay, that's weird. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. Command key was stuck for some reason. Okay, so here we go. Here's the UI as it is. Uh, we can have a look at the changes. I've already made some changes here. Um, we can stage those and we can unstage them. But the problem is that uh, you can write a simple commit message like this, blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't properly support multi-line. And I thought the best way to solve that would be to just use a external editor uh, the same way that Git does. So um, what I've added is if you press Shift C instead of just C, it will launch um, an external editor for you instead. And the th uh, thinking here is that you can type some kind of message, blah, blah, blah. And once you exit the editor, um, GitDry will pick that up and use that message as a commit, uh, commit message. Right. So let's go back. Did not commit anything. That's good. So there were ma three main problems with this. The first one was, um, we need the UI to redraw completely when we're turning from uh, editors that are run inside of the terminal. So for Vim, for example, or other similar editors like Nano or Emacs, we need to redraw the whole thing and we need to specifically tell the framework that's used to draw this UI to, to do that because you end up in a kind of weird state where some of the UI elements are redrawn but not everything and it, the underlying the the text from the uh, the c oh sorry the text from the terminal underneath shine underneath shines through uh, or shows through rather <clears throat> so we need to fix that and as you can see it works now but the way i've solved it is is not really how we want to do it <laughs> and both me and extra worst or stefan uh, as he's uh, which is his name, we uh, we both agree on this. Um, I didn't like the solution when I submitted it. I, I just made a, like a, a draft to just as a proof of, proof of concept to show that it worked. So uh, after some discussion, we've come up with a way that we might want to solve it. So I'm going to try to implement some of that tonight. Um, the first thing is that we need some kind of way to message uh, from the commit component, which is the component responsible for commit messages, to the main loop of the of the app that we want the whole UI to redraw. The way I do that currently is down here, where I reference a commands channel, which is defined on uh, uh, at the top level of the crate. 
and I send a message. And as you can see, this is unsafe because this is a static, uh, static uh, field or uh, uh, it's a, it's immutable static defined in create in the create top level, which is unsafe. So I've added a comment here that it <laughs> uh, this is set up uh, set up during app setup and should never be mutated again uh, outside of this. Uh, single um, this call like this, but this is not going to last um, in the long run. So this is not really what we want to do e um, in any way. In any case, uh, the other problem is actually this line right here, <laughs> uh, which is also repeated almost down here, uh, where it will go to a specific um, atomic U size. We can jump to that one, an atomic U size. And as you can see, I've had a to do here, do this properly. Uh, what this does is it will do a check if it should do uh, if it should do a poll or not. And this, what this does is it runs a loop which will check for input events from the from the keyboard. So we'll run uh, it will run this all the time and look for inputs, and uh, then send those inputs to the to get your eye to, to handle them, um, whatever the keys that were pressed. And this stops it from, from doing that. And this is to prevent uh, get UI from stealing key presses when the external editor is open. So if the external editor is some some GUI software, uh, for example, code or Visual Studio Code or, or Atom or something, this is not a problem. But if it's an editor that opens inside of the terminal, it is a problem because it will, Git UI will basically steal key events uh, or keystrokes from uh, from the user, uh, or and from Vim. So, approximately every other key that you press will be sent to Vim, which is not what you want at all. So we need some way to to do this better too. Uh, this was just again as a proof of concept. It works, but it's not optimal. It's not how we want to do it. We want to move it down here uh, for one thing. Anyway. So what we actually need is a way to, first of all, I'm going to solve this with this channel, which is unsafe, and we don't really want unsafe in this code. And I'm going to solve this by using a queue, which is passed down to all the child components of the app, which is stored here in this, um, in this commit components draft. And this queue allows you to, to um, send events from, uh, some way down the hierarchy of components, uh, further up, and and ultimately to almost to the main loop, which is what we want. So let's start by looking at the main RS because we've got the main function, which runs a infinite loop right here, which is the main loop of the the program, and it will run through this all the time. Uh, to update all kinds of things regarding the UI and whatever. And inside of this app.event, uh, we can handle input events, which are just events from the keyboard and can update the app accordingly. So the app is kind of its own state that, uh, that handles all the what what should be shown on the screen right now. And this main or this main loop here, has the responsibility to draw the the UI according to how app defines it at the moment. And as it stands now, hmm. yeah, so we, we got this one, the full redraw, which does the redraw as it is now. But this depends on uh, this depends on this Rx commands, which is the global static mutable thing right here, static mutable commands channel. And um, yeah, this is um, <laughs> this is not optimal. Uh, this is set down here, yeah. So again, unsafe right here. Not good. Right. So we need some way. Basically, uh, hmm. 
we need some way for this loop to know that it should call this function. And how do we do that? Well, we will have to... Hmm. So if we're going to use the Q mechanism, the Q is known The Q is processed. That's what I'm trying to say. The Q is processed in this function. At the moment, this function uh, only returns a, re a result of unit or void or nothing. So I'm considering that maybe it should return a value of some kind, which tells this loop to do something more than just so kind of kind of can send instructions back so for example you need got this needs needs draw which is set to true by default but if it's a spinner update it sets it to false so you can opt out of it and i'm thinking maybe we should do something of the sort right here where this or rather, any of these actually could send a, could specify that something else should be done. Or we could just, hmm. Okay, so if we have a look at this uh, function. It receives our event. And then it updates this. Flags defining what part of the app needs to update. All, diff, or commands. Right. Make this a Q event. Set any set when set when any tree component changes selection. Make this a Q event. I'm assuming this refers to this, which tells me that Stefan has already thought that this might need moving up a level hmm interesting i'm a bit uncertain how to solve this though should i maybe make this a q event or should i make this some kind of other command and should I be able to return multiple commands? Is that... Um, because it goes through... Uh, let's see... Um, here, process queue. This is where it goes through self.queue. Self.queue. Pops to front. And as long as there are, is something to pop, it will insert that flag, or, or a flag, called needs update, 
uh, I need update needs update flag into this one. Right. Hmm. This is process internal event, so needs update all. So both the commands and the uh, and the diff. Because the internal event one, uh, internal event is pretty fleshed out. It has a lot of different things. So when something happens, right? So it, it updates the state of self, which is app. And it also tells it how much it sh should redraw. So that kind of feels like the ness the great amount of okay so then it calls update commands Okay, so this event, let's see, where are you? Here we go. This is a mutable reference. And this is what actually draws the app. It gets a reference to itself and a frame. Right, so in the main loop here, and instead of this draw function, what we do is actually just call draw on the app with the frame supplied by the terminal. Right. So what we could do is if we update the app state to say, yes, wait a second. I think I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, looking at some of uh of some of my chat with extraverse, this is actually what he wants. Yeah. Or at least what he suggests. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just took me uh, quite a while to get there. <clears throat> so in theory uh do this requires redraw that should just be a bool yes uh, let's start with the uh, where is the eternal internal event uh, let's go to that one that's defined here and Let's just copy what he's done here and then say
let's see, confirm action, confirmed action, show error. Um, so I guess request redraw. Looks like it's in the imperative form, I think it's called. And it sounds like a command. Uh, let's do it like this. Request redraw as an eternal event. Then inside of the commit, we will, uh, let's see, commit, no, uh, that's um, command, oh, what's it called? Command channel, no. Uh, open editor. Show editor. Uh, let's see. All right, this one. So instead of making this a queue event, uh, let's just delete the six lines and we'll do self dot q dot. Uh, do we use just uh, oh, uh, borrow mute dot push back and we'll add internal event request redraw like so. So once we return from this command, which is the command to launch the external editor, uh, Vim or Visual Studio Code or whatever, it should request a full redraw. So we add that to, to the queue. That's good. Um, also, before I forget, I probably should just remove, let's see, uh, let's add back this, because that will make this not compile because we have this static mute, which doo -doo -doo -doo, we should also remove, which is defined here. So let's delete those which again will give us an error over here. And this will give us an error for this one. This doesn't need this, which again should give us problems over here. And here. Uh, yeah, let's go back into app. And when it handles events, uh, we'll just add another case at the bottom saying if it's internal event, request redraw, we will uh, do uh, requires redraw, to, hmm, interesting, true. We should probably Let's make this one of these. And we'll also say that we need, hmm. Oh, we'll keep it, uh, we'll keep it like this. But we should reset this at some point. Not inside here. Uh, but maybe at the beginning. Hmm. Hmm. In the main loop. Does it get a mutable? Yeah, it does get a mutable reference to the app. Okay, so maybe this should just check. So at this point, anyways, uh, if app dot requires, uh, ah, right. We also need a way to get 
looked at the property, so we should just find a getter somewhere. Uh, these are all private. I think this is a private info block. Yep. Does it have any getters before this? Not really. So let's see. Just put it down here, I think. Uh, public fn requires redraw blah 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 if at the type that returns a oops, sorry uh, returns a bool and that's just self oh we, actually we need a reference to self requires redraw Oh, yeah, whoa. Why did I do that? There we go. <clears throat> and then if we head back to main, instead of the draw function, we'll just um, opt in. Hello, people in the chat. Um, I had it closed down for, for a little bit here, but uh, let's see. Is it possible we can handle, enable more options of quality? It's too much, 440 by P60 is too much for me to handle. Well, it is my native resolution. Um, I could maybe change it. I'm not gonna change it now. I, may, I might change it for a future stream. Maybe downscale it before I stream it. Um, yeah, I might do that. Uh, but I'm not going to change anything now. I don't want to spend a lot of time figuring that out. I, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really sure how to do that. Uh, so <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll keep it like this for this one. Uh, so if you come back come back another time, I'll I'll see if I have a solution uh, for that. Uh, let's see. Oops. Uh, right here. So if app dot requires redraw, hmm. Yeah, but hmm. Uh, terminal versus size. Both of these can return errors, so let's do this, like so. This should be the same as this, yeah. So actually, let's remove this. And remove these. Where did my draw go? So it requires redraw. Do the resize thing, which is counterintuitive, I know, but as far as I can tell, this is the only function on terminal uh, on the uh, on the back end that will actually do a proper reset of the whole uh, drawing area, because it does it does a lot of diffing. Um, uh, to e the framework used for the UI uh, does uh, diffing between the previous render and this render and only re-renders the parts that change. And this, as far as I can tell, is the only function that will clear both buffers so that you actually it actually redraws everything and doesn't utilize any of the, uh, any diffing at all. So, yeah, that's, that's what, why it's resize. Uh, let's see. But we have to reset this requires redraw at some point. 
And I was thinking maybe I could do it here, but I'm not going to do that because that just feels weird. So I'm going to move... I'm going to move this inside of the, uh, what's it called, process queue. I think I might just reset it here. We have a mutable self-reference. This is before we start processing the queue. So if we want to re require another redraw, that should be set back to true. So I, I feel like this is the best time to do it. We're just going to make a bit of space here. Let's do self dot requires redraw and set that to false. Hmm. Yeah. Reset flags. Let's go up to the here and just flags. So these are just just to note that these are special in some way in that they well there's do quit too. Which is kind of a flag. No, maybe I'll, I'll, I think I'll leave it like that. Or, hmm. Kind of special though, because it only gets it to true when you actually want to quit the program. <laughs> so, hmm. Nah, I'm going to leave it like that. Um, beneath here, we're going to get the, the other thing, which is uh, not redraw, but um, whether or not it should uh, try to fetch uh, or try to catch keystrokes. Uh, into events. Okay, so now it's reset. Uh, let's uh, jump over to the. Oops, that's not what I want. This one, and rebuild it. See what happens. Okay, we got some warnings and error. And an error. Let's see in commit. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, there we go. So inside commit an error at line five, which is fine. We don't use that anymore. And we don't use, let's see, main line 32. We don't use sender anymore. That's fine. Missing field requires we draw an initializer. Oh, that's, that makes sense. So on line 59, oops, uh, line 59. False. False unexpected. Oh, right, right. Wow. Uh, <laughs> requires redraw. There we go. These threw me off. <laughs> <coughs> this is the thing when you switch languages between your day job and, uh, and uh, your spare time. And you suddenly forget how to initialize pro uh, objects properly. Uh, let's see. Well, it looks like it went through. Here we go. Okay, let's jump down here. Let's launch this editor. And when we return, it should... Redraw, and it did. She's exactly what we wanted. Uh oh, why did it blink? Uh, it's probably fine. Might just be. Hmm, interesting. Why does it do the blinking? Oh. There it goes again. Why does it do that? That shouldn't happen. I think. Okay, so let's... 
requires redraw. log redrawing like so and then we'll run this with the dash L option which gives us a log 2 uh, I think I need the incorrect one we're going to go to caches I think there's log in here yep so, if we head down here, get into the editor, we click back out. Uh, let's see, we just exit, exit out of this. Let's see what this uh, says. There should be some it's not case sensitive, is it? Oh, apparently it is. Redraw. Okay, there is only one redraw, so it's something else. Okay, that's good. That's good. Just find it weird though that it happens at all. Because I don't think it happens uh, let's see. If we do cargo run again. The flickering doesn't. S hmm. Does the flickering start before I do this? So it flickers. And it does it again. Okay, this is weird. Why does it flicker like that? Okay. Flickers at five seconds. And 10 seconds. So every five seconds it flickers. That's, <laughs> that can't be a coincidence. <laughs> Why does it flicker all of a sudden? That is strange. Okay, let's just let it run for a few seconds and see what happens. Okay. So now it does not flicker. Well, that's annoying. Why does it flicker when I call resize? That is strange. And it doesn't go into the... Interrupt report. There we go. Uh, let's see. Info. Right, right. I haven't uh, done anything. So go down here. Go into this. Okay, so this time it does not flicker. See, now I'm not sure if this is because of my computer or if it's something with the code. Okay, I think I'm gonna assume that it's just my setup that's being wrong. 
because that doesn't flicker anymore. So that's not consistent at all. Anyway, I've managed to refactor this, so I'm just going to commit what I've got. Wait, wait. Two commits to master? Uh, oh, I hadn't pulled them before I rebased. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. So for both me and Stefan, the maintainer of GitUI, we're both trying to replace Fork, which is this uh, GUI client. He started this project to, to replace Fork, and I stumbled upon this project um, while kind of being on the market for an, for, uh, for an alternative to Fork. We're still far off from where we need to be to make Fork uh, it a viable <clears throat> alternative to Fork, but, you know, we'll get there, hopefully, eventually. So let's see, these all make sense, yes. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we we do. Uh, uh, let's call it just like redraw. from uh, static mutable variable to using um, what's called internal event via the uh, app dot q signaling when to completely redraw the app. Right. So let's put all this here and commit those. Okay. As you can see, Git UI actually live updates over here. I'm not sure if it's fixed yet. This might still be do polling where it just goes every. Oh, wait a second. It does the polling every five seconds. That's interesting. Okay, that's worth having in the back of our, our minds that I know somewhere in the code that it, every five seconds it checks the file system or rather checks the Git status to see if there are any changes and updates the UI accordingly. I know that happens every five seconds, which is the same frequency as the, uh, the, the, oh, what, what did I call it? The blinking or yeah, of the UI. So that might be something, uh, we'll have to come back to it if we see it manifest again. Okay, so for the second part, which is the polling problem. So let's just close down, I think. Uh, what's that mean? Uh, like so. Whoops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cancel. That's not whoa, whoa, what I want. Isn't it? Uh, oh, here we go. Helps doing the right key combination. So inside, inside, inside of poll, we start a background thread, which. Uh, uses event polling. So it checks for new keystrokes or input events from the user. And once we start the external editor, we don't want Git UI to listen for more key events to prevent it from capturing those key events and not passing them on. So at the moment, 
I have an if block right here, if should do poll. And if <laughs> this checks the, this one, which is a, a atomic use size. Oh, that's a bit small on the stream. So it's defined over here with a comment, do this properly. Uh, <laughs> it's just an atomic use size, uh, which makes sure that it is possible to read and write to this across threads without having uh, race conditions. So it checks if it's a, if it's the, uh, if modulo two returns zero, so if it's dividable by two, it should do polling. And if not, it shouldn't. So what I do inside of commit is, uh, should do poll. I do a fetch add, which will add one to the current value and also fetch the, fetch the current value and then add one to it. But I, I don't use the, the fetched value, but I do add one so that it, it comes uh, right before I launch the external editor, which is here. And then right after I add one again. So once this command is running, the external editor, editor that is, the should do poll will be a an odd number, which will make it not poll. However, there are two problems. There is a timeout set right here for how long it should be listening for events. And that timeout is two seconds and it shouldn't be any shorter to prevent too much load on the CPU just checking for events. So we don't want to change that. But, and we can't have it all over here because the problem now is that you might end up launching the external editor. And once you try typing, it will swallow one of the keystrokes because it's in within those two seconds where it is listening for new events. So we actually want the if to be inside of here, I think, which is after the duration has passed and we, we don't actually read the event until we get here. So if we just skip this and return none, then I think we will be fine. But what me and Stefan discussed is something different entirely, which is to kill this background thread and respawn it when we launch the external editor and close it or return from it. So instead of having this, if at all, we should just kill the whole th thread listing for polling events. And hopefully we don't know for sure, <laughs> but hopefully this will also kill this, um, feature where it, where it, um, where it uh, has a timeout. Hmm. So the way that this works in now is that it returns a receiver called Rx. That receiver passes along the key events. Hmm, I'm just gonna open a can of soda. Hmm. Part of the problem here is we don't have a problem setting up the flag in, in quotation marks, which decides whether or not we should have polling or not. That's a, that we can do that, that on app. No problem. The, <laughs> the problem is though, that this function is called in the main loop, uh, bef uh, outside of the, uh, of, of the app context, you might say. 
the, the results of this loop are passed into the app. So once we get to the app, we're already kind of too late. I'm not really sure how to explain this. I could just look at the code, I guess. So inside of the main loop of the application, which is here, so this is where it loops forever, uh, or as long as the application runs, we receive queue events from here, right? So we, for each of the events, match them. And the events that are received from this input, or rather this receiver called Rx input, these are input events, which are the events produced by this queue event input event. The input event is then passed to this event function on the app. But then again, we kind of want to stop the we want to <laughs> we want to stop the thread that's spawned here. We want to stop this based on some properties set here. But the problem is this uh, thread and this receiver <clears throat> is created here. <laughs> so we could maybe In theory, we could pass in a receiver here, which could do this whole thing. That might actually work. That could actually work, yeah. Not optimal. That, that's going back to what we didn't want to do, which is have an if statement in here. Hmm. But there is precedence of doing it that way because of this git transmitter or sender, which is passed to app new and is used inside of the app apparently. And is used here. So we could create a sender receiver. Does this return a handle or something? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. If 
fire yourself a task into the RAM thread pool in the static or global scope, just like a standard thread. This task is not tied to the current stack frame, hence it cannot hold any references to other than those with static lifetime. If you want to spawn a task that references stack data, use the scope function. Since tasks spawned with this function cannot hold references into the enclosing stack frame, you almost certainly want to use the move closure as your argument. Otherwise, the closure will typically hold references to any variables. Okay. Expect to prove its side effects, i.e. it might send messages, modify data, break a mutex or some such thing. Computer results spawn future. Okay. <clears throat> okay, while it's not the thing that I th thought we wanted to do, I think it's actually better to just send in a receiver here and move that into this closure kind of feels like that's the better solution. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't receive a handle to this. So it doesn't look like there's a... Almost looks like oh, uh, where do you go? Blah 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 blah. Doesn't really say if, how you wanna. It doesn't look like it, you're supposed to kind of <sighs> to kill these. I'm gonna go with the with the channel approach. Yeah. So I'm going to do something as similar to this first. So we have a transmitter for uh, hmm. It's a bit verbose. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make it verbose for now. And we can maybe rename these after. Uh, unbounded. There we go. Then we pass that in here. Then we get a shared reference, apparently. Fine. TX event. No, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, we'll also have to go to this right here and say that we want a oh. this is just called sender mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so all of these can send messages So I'm going to rename this, I think, to make it a bit more obvious. So sender, oh, come on, get. And then there's also another sender, which is sender underscore input polling. Oh, I'm really not liking this <laughs> naming. <clears throat> Which is also a sender, but it's of a hmm. Should it just be a boolean, or should it be some kind of enum? Maybe. I don't know. Me and Stefan consider an enum. I'm kind of trying to think what would. 
You know what? I'm gonna leave it as a bool for now. We can change the type later if we feel the need. Shouldn't be a problem. Nah. Okay. So, the commit component. It's going to need the sender. Um, the Q usually is first. Uh, and the theme last, I guess. So, sender into polling. Pass that further down to those that need it. So, let's see. Can we jump in here. This will also now also receive a sender input polling, which is of type. Beam channel, I think. A bool. I think that's right. Cross beam channel, yeah. So that's the sender of bool, and we'll just store that inside of this. Uh, let's see, right here. Really gonna call it this all the way through. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Commit. Struct. Sender. Input. Polling. It's a reference to a center of a bool. Ah, crap. Right. Now we need lifetimes. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, for example, one of these that uses inspect commit component that uses the git sender. Ah, but it doesn't store it. That's interesting. How does it use it? Okay, so it's set inside the Okay, so inside that one, it's a sender, which uses it inside of a sync, async, okay, let's see how that uses it. There we go. Ah, it clones the sender. Okay. And that way. So it has a reference to it and then it clones it. Yeah, it's just a regular phone. But sure, if that's how we do it, we'll just copy that. So this is going to be one of those. And then. comes to this, uh, we'll just set this to be a clone. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> that just me sneezing. Okay. So now we've got the sender input polling. And down here, self dot center input polling send 
message of t. Which is some false. And here it should say self sender coupon send true. So this is to turn polling off and on respectively. Right. Yeah, okay, I didn't import that. Good. Okay, so now we've sent the message. All the way down through app. So now we need to use the Rx event polling and pass that to the start polling thread. Rx event polling, let's pass that in here. Let's jump to that one and say that it should receive a sender of uh, should be a sender of. No, 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 not a sender. That's wrong. Okay, let's let's. Hmm. A receiver. Of receiver. Bool. Uh, when it comes to the to the receivers, do we keep those around? Okay, so we passed them by reference over here. Should I do the same? Probably should. Looks like that's the way to do it. Haven't used these too much, so I'm... Not too certain how to do this. Uh, let's see. Now, for the receiver, I want it to be used. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to remove this this one. And then we don't need a ton of view size anymore. Mm, yep. We don't need this if right here. Like so, but we want the <clears throat> let mute. We're gonna hmm. ah, now herein lies the problem. Okay, let's uh, should handle event read event. True. Let's start out with that assumption. Now, if I remember correctly, this will blocks the current thread until a message is received or the channel is empty and disconnected. Right. That's not what we want.
That's not what we down with at all. This is just a hmm. Didn't think of that. Didn't think of it blocking. Because hmm. we don't want to wait for that. We just want to receive whenever it changes. So I'm still struggling with this. I think the only way to kind of to to, to make this exit or or uh, stop running is to break the loop. Can we move that too? So. So we either have to break the loop What's a bit awkward is that it's done inside of here. Why is it? Hmm. Let's see, because what we actually want is it is for it to skip here. Either break this loop. The problem is though, that this doesn't really know about app at all. This is just like, Plumbing it doesn't know about app, and app doesn't really know about the polling, which is good. Which is which is good. Hmm. Hmm. 
still really struggling with how I want to do this in a proper way. For the life of me, I can't figure out a better way to do it than the, than basically the atomic U size. I could probably use a mutex or something to make it a bit more, um, a bit more readable, but phew, yeah, this is not optimal. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna put this in. Uh, why is it done? There we go. Uh, I'm just gonna put this all in. Screw it. I'm just gonna stash it for now. Uh, we'll just name, name it. Um, Polling. And, um, I don't know, uh, <laughs> channels. <clears throat> Just to give it a name. Head back here. This should reset to use this. Let's just try to move this if right here. Down. Here. Yes. Grab that one too. Uh, else return a okay of none. So after the timeout, it checks whether or not it should do polling at all. And if it should, then do it. If not, then don't. All right. Let's close this. Run it again. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it, but my printer suddenly came to life. Not really sure why. <laughs> Ghost printer, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, so we're changing this. Yep. So when I head in here. Yeah, it felt like it was a problem still. Yeah, it's still, still not working properly. So the problem is still that I, uh, if I head in, uh, let's see if we add that back in here. When I head into Vim, it still eats the first keystroke, so We'll just type numbers this time and you'll be able to see. Oh, okay, we need, we kind of need to be quick enough uh, for it to to show up properly. So let's see. Yeah, so I did type a two, 
but that too was swallowed by Kichuai. So if we now go back here, you guys can see we're on the second tab because I hit hit the two. So that is the problem. So that didn't work either. Moving it all the way down in here. <coughs> hmm. Let's uh, starting polling. And then we will check here. We'll say reading event. And here we'll say not reading event. Okay, hmm. might have not been fast enough, or it might actually work. Let's try it again. Oh, no, I think it still still didn't work. Oh no, yeah, it's not working. But okay, well, let's uh, let's just exit this and go down here and have a look at the logs. Okay, so right here, we're pressing the shift C. Then it says, yeah. It, <clears throat> starting polling, reading event. Starting polling, then it registers to key press that I just did. Then it says not reading event. Well, according to this, interesting. So if we search for reading event, we get this one, which is the S, then we press Shift C. Right, this file is huge. Okay, yeah. Let's see, so if we get to the next one, here we go. Not reading event. And then it all of a sudden says, reading event again. And then it's redrawing. I left that in. We shouldn't let leave that in. Let's see. Name. There we go. Let's just. Um... Let's add that to the stage and just amend it into the previous one. There we go. Okay, so according to this, it shouldn't be reading the event. But it clearly is, though. 
some of the time at least. Not reading event. It claims to be not reading it when it shouldn't. But there still is one uh, once a single keystroke that's being consumed somewhere other than Vim. And that is a problem. So Yeah, so the file is on stage because I am pressing A and A is consumed by Git UI and that is on stage all. So it claims to not be reading the event, but it kind of does anyway. Turns OK true if an event is available, returns OK false. Guarantees that subsequent call to the read won't block. Right. Surgery and says poll function must return immediately with an event build. Okay. So it feels like this this poll function actually will consume the event regardless. of whether or not it's read here. It seems. Yeah, no, but then again, how does the rest of Git UI actually handle this if this is not call with the proper event? Uh, let's see if we have a look in the main loop, I think. And we go down here for E and events. It's just info, and we'll do a colon like so. I'm not sure if it borrows automatically, but we'll, we'll do that here. There we go. Oh, actually, uh, while I'm at it, set of here. I think I just remove this and this actually. Like so. Q and cannot be formatted. Right. Uh, let's see. If we go and say here, it does log the event though. Yeah, so we'll, we'll let the trace handle this. All of the three. And now it's dashing instead of status. Let's have a look at the log. It's reading an event. Reading an event. This is, of course, the S. And this is FKC. And then there's the three. There we go.
reading event. Oh, crap. No, 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 don't worry. Cancel. Let's see if Paul... Hmm. So it feels like maybe event poll will um, reserve the event for it to be read by event read, which makes sense in 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 a kind of way where it, where it says that this shouldn't block if this has been called before it. Combine with the poll function to get non-blocking reads. Wait a second. Does that mean... Right, right, because you can, yeah, mm, right, right. I truly don't see an elegant way to solve this, to be honest. Because as long as we call this, we are basically screwed. Because this will capture the next instance of an event that it sees, regardless of what I do inside of here. So the solution is not to call poll at all. The problem is though, that it's too fast. It doesn't. So I'm kind of stuck back where I was, where I'm not able to prevent it from, from doing that. Uh, the only solution that I see is this sends a batch of Q events. And when it gets to here, it loops back and does another, does another poll.
I don't really see a way around this, to be honest. Uh, I think I... Because when it gets to here, it reads the... Uh, it pulls. And once it gets it, it will push it. And then it will check, should it send those? Or should should it wait, wait a bit? problem still remains though that if it's inside of the hmm. if it's instead of you know, the two second timeout which is the max pole duration it will capture that key event that's just the way it is The only solution that might be or the event stream. Waits for an every given time, it's guaranteed to read one block from the pull function. It turns true. Let's have a look at the docs for this. This it only has poll and read. Okay, so those are the only two functions available. Ah, that's problematic. A stream of result event. See events with A6 center Tokyo crates. Yeah, right. That didn't help much. It does kind of feel like that the only way hmm. Yeah, I'm not really certain how to um, how to solve this. I can't think of a better way to do it, and that's not good enough, basically. 
Oh, hello, Cream Blast. Um, currently, my problem is I'm trying to prevent this get you I I'm trying to prevent it from reading keystrokes from the keyboard when I launch git so if I'm right here I can do this it will launch git the problem is though that it will capture exactly one keystroke <laughs> uh, before uh, and not pass it on to, to vim so I won't so, so if I start typing too quickly, it will capture one of the keystrokes and not pass it on to Vim, which will look like it didn't re register in Vim, which is, which is I'm trying to prevent, what I'm trying to prevent. But um, I can't find a good way to do it. Apart from basically going against the desires of the maintainer. So, I either, hmm, I think there's basically, so far I have two possible solutions. One of them I know that the maintainer is not too keen about, which is lower the, the timeout duration. So we'll make that smaller. We will decrease the chance that it will it, it will happen it's kind of a it's kind of a hack with timeouts which is in my opinion one of the worst kinds <laughs> where you basically just say where you just uh, whether it's one of the worst kinds where you where you um Use a timeout to kind of work around race conditions, which is never good. So Cream Blast, you say, so if a key is pressed in between the timeout, it's not captured. Uh, right, okay, so. <clears throat> Let's see. Inside of here, this line specifically, will launch an, ex an external editor of some kind. It might be Vim, it might be Visual Studio Code. But if it is Vim or any other editor that uses the terminal, it will need to receive the keystroke events of the, of the user typing on the keyboard. The problem is, though, that Git UI also has a background thread running, which will also capture those keystrokes. So we need to stop that from happening. Because if we let... Uh, if we let Git UI capture those keystrokes, they won't ever be passed on to them. So what we do is we try to stop Git UI from capturing key events right before we launch the program. The problem is though, that in the logic that captures the key events, it will wait for two seconds to see if it receives any key events and if it doesn't, it will abort the attempt to to capture any key events, and then it will basically check whether or not it should be checking for key events. So if we launch Vim, it will wait for two seconds to check for any key events. It will find the one, uh, find one, then realize, oh, I'm not supposed to capture any key events, and then stop doing it. And that's the problem. <laughs> so I've tried moving this if around. It, it pre I previously had it up here, just around the whole kind of lo looping logic that checks um, for key events. But and I hope that if I moved it down inside of here, that would work. But it does not. <sighs> So, because it looks like, as far as I can see, or figure out rather, this poll function will capture the event. So whether or not you actually read it over here, this will capture it. Um, this loop, or this, this uh, thread right here, is spawned at the when the program launches. 
So this runs infinite, uh, an infinite loop in the background for as long as the program runs. So uh, I could just do this, I think. Yeah. So we just go back a little bit. Uh, nope. So this is what I had originally, where it just puts all of this inside of a inside of the if block. But the problem is that it will it will register that it should open Vim, then it will rerun the loop before this is updated. So that then it will do the, another two seconds of polling, find the one event, capture that, try to rerun the loop, figure out, oh, I should not be polling, and then not do it, <laughs> I guess. <sighs> So one, one solution would be to lower the max poll duration to be smaller. So it will time out before Vim launches, but after this has been modified. But it's kind of hacky because it kind of relies on timing. And it's just going to lead to some race conditions where... We're probably just going to get a, a bug report saying sometimes it's, it eats one of the keystroke events. So, yeah. Another solution that I thought of was killing the background thread. Maybe you can use MSPC to send an event that breaks loop. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I was thinking, thinking of that, but... Um, because we're using these uh, crossbeam channels. But the problem is that the receive function or receive, uh, yeah, but receive function, uh, the problem with it is it blocks. So then I have to set up the whole thing where it does, it kind of spins waiting for it to see if it should run or not. So let's see, I do actually have, um, which one is this? Yeah, let's just, if we pop this dash, yes, or apply it rather, this actually does that, uh, where it sets up the, a, it sends in a receiver of a bool, which in theory should say, if this sends true, do the polling thing. If it sends false, stop doing it. The problem is, if I try to receive on this receiver, this function right here, uh, not sure if you can actually read it, but uh, it blocks the current thread. So I need to set up a way to not block this thread while it waits for it to receive anything. Um, and I think, <clears throat> I think the way to do that is to either, hmm. I think I might have muted myself. Oh no. Uh, let's check the... Well, it does show me a feed here. <laughs> Let's see. I can hear myself. Let's see. <laughs> Jake, you have an idiot. I'm you. Okay, you made it. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so the problem is that the receive uh, the receiving um, function blocks. So I think there was a solution in here somewhere with a select where it checks whether or not it receives a message to stop or start polling or try to do a poll, I think. But I'm not really sure. 
I'm not really sure what that is. That solution. So this is as about as far as I got where it kind of stopped for me. So I have, I have it set up and everything over here. So it sends a message, stop polling, start polling over here. The problem is kind of stuck here. And that's just annoying. But it doesn't, <clears throat> it still doesn't solve this problem where it, where it starts polling for two seconds. That still prevails. So the alternative is to break out of the loop <clears throat> once we receive an event here. I think, yeah, but it's, that's, hmm. The problem is there, though, that this, it's not, yeah, well, hmm. We could just make this immutable, I guess. Where are you? Uh, start pulling thread. If we make this mutable, reassign it, Yes, that works. By calling this once again, when we want to start it up again. I think the other solution might be to convert this to a future and use the abortable future from future utils. You just have a loop that spawns a task to wait. And when it's time to stop, you can just abort the future. So I'm guessing that you're saying that uh, let's see, this should be a future instead of using the spawn function. Right, right. Mm, yes. I don't know if they have Tokyo or anything similar set up though. No, it's uh, it's all um, it's all sync. No, no, or, or there. No, no way to sync yet. No runtime. It's only uh, on these background threads. I see what you're what you're saying. I still think this might pose a problem because as, as soon as we launch this, it, it it's already too late. So even if we could like cancel this, I'm afraid this would still, no, hmm. That should kind of own that sub process, I guess. No, can, aborting it might actually work. I agree. See if you abort this. The 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 hmm. It might depend on the implementation, but if you abort the future, does it actually hmm that means basically it's not gonna do uh, trying to kind of think what it would do with unfinished tasks. So for for example, for a for a web request, it can't stop the server from sending the header response, but it can well it could just not read it, I guess. And close to connection. My my get what I'm trying to figure out is 
just because I aborted, it, will it still kill all these oh things running? I made a little health check service that did that and it seemed to cancel the work and just stop doing it. Okay. So it does kill all of its kind of sub processes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of the futures, uh, let's just bring this over. Over here, a few is going to be remotely short circuited using a port handle. Yeah. Check under new. That's the wrong window. Here we go. Using the system. Can we carry it through a port? I don't know. The port is called the handle tied to wrench. Or the port has to call the future complete immediately without making any further sort of progress. Okay. Yeah, because it basically, yeah, 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 because it's polling. So we could basically just say, don't make any more progress. Okay, that makes sense. I think the other, uh, let's see. Do this. Hmm, yes. Uh, this could very well be a solution. So I'm guessing this could then return both the the receiver and the future. Have the future run basically infinitely until aborted. Then reassign both the receiver and the the future. Yeah, okay, so you're thinking that maybe basically what's what's inside of uh, whether this should basically Yeah. I guess you're basically saying this should be a future maybe. Hmm. Yeah, because if you just did a read directly, that would block, but then you abort it. Entire body of the loop. Yeah, probably. Well, yes, probably. It does have some references that might be a bit tricky to move between the futures all the time, but yeah, basically, yeah. Hmm. Instead of doing this, we could use a future and abort that future, which would then never read, which will, would never capture it. Yeah, that's... That's not unfeasible. Oh, and the link. Let's bring that over.
Maybe we can use that and possibly just use spawn blocking in the loop. This move for the FBI is running blocking operation. Synchronous context. Spawn blocking. Run the provided closure on a thread where blocking is acceptable. Right, right. So we might block on this and then just break it off if, if it doesn't return on, t on time. But also, as you're saying, we could just make this whole thing a task, spawn blocking, and run the whole thing, whole of this, and just redo this whole thing whenever we want to run it, start it up again. Yeah, it seems just seems like uh, Ray can Ray core spawn doesn't have logistics to handle cancelling work. No, it doesn't. Re I think the main problem, uh, whether this will just run to the end of the block, this this um, closure, and the, the, it'll just stop. The problem is, though, so yeah, it doesn't really support um, aborting, I guess. The problem is, there's a loop here. And this is what's keeping it alive, basically. And... As long as I break out of this loop, I, I, I probably will be fine. My main problem is this, though, which is it will once once I start this, it, it it's on a two second timeout and there's no way to, to abort abort it. And if it find it, so hmm, it will either either capture uh, an event or it will not. But I can't start it. Once I start it, I can't abort it afterwards. I think you're right then. Wrapping that event pole in a future will handle the issue. I think so, maybe. <laughs> the problem is though, I, I, I could probably wrap this in, the, in a future. But I would still need a way to signal that it should be aborted. Which, then I'm kind of back where I started with this receiver, which is blocking again. But then I would, hmm. What I could do, I'm trying to think. Uh, I could probably pass in some kind of. Let me check how they handle shutdown signal with another code. That might give us a clue. Yeah, that's not not a bad idea. I haven't worked with futures in Rust properly yet. But what I'm thinking is this could be instead of a receiver, like some kind of future that you would, you would both, you would have wait both of them, both the future for the poll and the future for like um, aborting it and then select the one that returns a result first, I guess. But we would have to reuse the 
the future passed in. Hmm. Or rather, it could actually be two futures uh, because we probably have to pass ownership. Right. Hmm. I I I have a alternate alternate solution, but I am not too big a fan of it, and that is that is basically giving this. this polling logic a bit of domain knowledge where if it knows about certain hmm, if it knows about certain events that might occur then it will know to not continue polling so if it if it knows that when you press shift C that's going to launch an external program so stop polling immediately never just pause the loop or whatever that would solve the problem but my my problem with it is I don't want to give the loop that much domain knowledge basically and the rest of it from another thread. Okay, let's look at this link. I think this is kind of what you want without using futures. Before West Point O and this step has changed or been removed since then, general question. Okay, thread spawn. Okay. After a time, based on some conditions, I need to terminate this thread from another part of my program. In other words, I want to exit the infinite loop. How can I do this correctly? They use try receive. So this looks like a non blocking way to do that. Uh, let's see. This is a receiver. Actually, just, just, can I look this up on, uh, 
let's see. Yep, check out the suspending resuming one too, because I think that's what you you want eventually. Oh, here we go. We suspends the thread until something arrives in the channel. In order to resume the thread, we need something. Okay. If it receives okay, then it's working. Then yeah, the problem here though is that. Hmm. This is basically, I think the problem is here that this is basically running whenever this channel sends a signal. My problem is that it's going to run basically regardless. I, I mean, this receiver may never receive anything. So in that case, it, this should still be running. This may never produce anything. I see what you're saying. Fair point. Yeah. Because <sighs> if not, we would probably need to send spam this with a ton of messages, we would, which would just be counterproductive, I think. This should be... What I want this to do is basically just say whether or not it should poll or not. And... Basically, the, the problem is this polling function which will do the whole timeout thing and consume regardless of wh whether we want it to or not. So I guess the solution to that is not using it and doing this manually. <sighs> but that kind of feels weird too. Or doing many manually in a way where you're able to cancel it before it and uh, the timeout ends. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Uh it's getting late in my time zone. I think I I I guess I'm going to think about this a bit more and have a chat with the maintainer and see what he says. Um he might have some ideas, I guess. Yeah. Ah, it's an annoying problem, this. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to end it there for tonight. Um, going low on sleep doesn't help uh, the problem think anyways. Thank you for your feedback, though, Green Blast. This actually... Well, it didn't solve the problem. It was really, uh, it was really nice to have someone to kind of, um, oh, what's the expression, spitball with, I guess. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, and um, hope you drop by some other time. Uh, if you, um, if you follow me on Twitter or something, um, you could. Yeah, I usually post there when I stream. Yeah, you have a good night too. Bye bye.